They say every time a Targaryen is born, the gods toss a coin and the world holds its breath. I still don't know how her coin has landed, but I'm quite certain about yours. I don't want it. I never have. Yo, yo, yo. What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode eight of the Sticker Podcast. Eight. I'm Nikki. And I am Steven. And, you know, we've taken a few days off. Had a nice little family vacay, just like a really little one. Lego land. Best place in the world <laughs> to take the kids. It, it is such a great place. The well, kids, especially at ours, our children's ages. Yeah, it, it's really, really, really awesome place for the little ones. It's an absolute blast. They love it so much. We love the Lego land. Yes. Shout yeah. out to the subscriber who came up to us yeah. and said, what's up? What's up? <laughs> that felt like super weird. And I was like super awkward about it. I was like, oh, nice to meet you. Sorry. It, it's still something to get used to. That's for sure. <laughs> she was like, oh, my God. I love your YouTube videos. I just watched you this morning. I was like, oh, my God. That's so awesome. And then I was like, nice to meet you. And I was like, hey. I didn't take a picture with you. I didn't catch your name. Are you supposed to offer that? I don't know. Or do they ask? What I've, do you want? You tell me. Yeah, I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> this literally never happens. Yeah, I, I don't know how to handle this situation. So I, I think we did okay. I think it was perfectly fine. I feel bad. Yeah. So I apologize in yeah. advance. It was nice to disconnect for a little bit. Kind of just hang out with the fam. Have some fun. Relax. But we're back. Yep. And we're also celebrating an anniversary this this month. Yes. Coming up so, very, very, very soon. Ten years. What do you mean very soon? On the 16th. Ten years, which of I Of marriage. Yes. We've I, been together for 14, married for 10. I think the video version of this is going up on our anniversary. Cool. So, happy anniversary. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> ten years, y'all. Uh, I, never, I never thought anybody would ever spend ten years with me. I'm just gonna be honest. Fourteen. Just give it well, the fourteen, though. That is true. Just because we've been together all those years prior. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, it's pretty spectacular. The big one zero. It's pretty amazing. We're in the double digits. I know. It's That's wild. insane. It is absolutely wild. And you know what else is wild? This last episode of Game of Thrones. Oh God! Which is what we are really here to talk about, and I've girl, got girl, what? I've got a couple things off the top that I want to hit on because I could sympathize with y'all. I understand where all of y'all are coming from. I get it. Episode. Do you? What was this episode five? Do you? Yes, this the is penultimate five. episode prior to the series finale. The entire series finale. That is just so crazy to think. But look, a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, are like, upset. Like two. <laughs> are upset about what, Just kidding. about what happened to Daenerys. And I get it. And I say this every single time. I apologize that I always go back to Star Wars. It's what I know best. Everybody a big giant eye roll. Yes. Right now. But it's going to make sense the, why I'm bringing it up right now. I get it. Because coming off of The Last Jedi, I feel like my favorite character in all of cinema was ruined. I'm using air quotes. Was ruined by a piece of content, a movie to be specific. And a lot of the complaints about Daenerys and her actions, it feels like it's like the same thing. People feel like they ruin their character all of these Mother of Dragon shirts now need to be burned and be oh, removed. I know. And you know what? Funny thing is, I saw an ad on Instagram for Dracaris. I'm sorry. <laughs> why do I keep saying that wrong? It w and it has like the little like, it kind of like looks like a little Adidas oh. flower, but it's not. It's like a dragon. That is a I, cool shirt. I It's to be here like Friday. And I'm like, <sighs> oops. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't. I mean, you're I always mean, you'll always be a mother of dragons. So I still love the dragons. So okay, I s and you have your own little dragons. I have because they dragons. are they are dragons without question. Yes, they could look really cool and fun and cute and all that stuff, but they flip a switch and they're just vicious. Have children, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I I completely understand where everyone's coming from with the. I guess betrayal 
is a good word. You feel betrayed by the creator. It's injustice. And, you know, I, I, I could totally sympathize with you because forever, the Luke Skywalker is what he was in The Last Jedi. And forever, Daenerys Targaryen is going to be what she was in Episode 5 of Season 8 of Game of Thrones. That's just, there is no rewriting that. That is canon. That is in the history books. You can't change it. And I totally, totally feel for you. Except, this has been coming for a long, long, long time. As much as we don't want to accept it. Yes. And we want to just try and brush it under the rug. He's got a point. And I'm going to apologize again. Because I'm going to the second thing I know best, professional wrestling. Oh my God. Because when it, it comes... It always goes back to professional wrestling. Because when it comes to storytelling and character development, pro wrestling is fantastic when it's done right. And if you are not familiar with the term, I'm going to give you a little, you know, vocabulary lesson on the slow burn. Because... What they did with Daenerys was legitimately the perfect slow burn. And the official definition, if there is such thing, (laughs) of what a slow burn is, a storyline that develops over a long period of time. Yeah. Which means they plant these little seeds throughout all of these different episodes since we're talking about a TV show, we could talk about, or I mean, pro wrestling is episodic as well. But they plant these little seeds just to make you possibly think something is up. Just to, just to put it in there. And for me, and maybe this is the wrong way to look at it, I feel like that seed has been planted since the moment she was born. Literally the moment she was born to who her parents were. That seed was planted in terms of what happened in this last episode. Throughout, we're gonna hit, there's a really good comment that we're gonna hit on because as always, we're gonna use your comments to drive the conversation. But it was there. We've seen it. Mm-hmm. It's been developed. Mm-hmm. There are certain people around to kind of maybe pull her back a little bit. And kind of support her and be there for her and love her and give her all the stuff that she needed. But this is the, this is the picture perfect definition of a slow burn. And I hate that it's like burn considering what we just watched, but is the perfect slow burn because they waited literally till the last minute to pull the trigger on this. Mm -hmm. There's only one episode left now. I'm like, what, what are they going to do? What are they going to possibly is, you can't redemption arc in one episode. Totally. I mean, they're, they, well, maybe you could. I mean, I don't there, know. There've been a lot of theories that she fell off her dragon, and that no. Drogon was just doing it. We on his rewatched. Own. Yeah. She was still on it. Yeah. There were there were a couple clear shots of her because still riding. I even fell for that. I was like, oh, maybe she did. Maybe she did fall off. Or maybe she lost control of him. Who knows? But I don't think so. I think that would. I think that would be a pretty wild way to kind of like retcon that moment. Um, but you know, a lot of things, and it's another thing that we're going to talk about was the idea that this happened in one episode, right? Which again, good storytelling. And I know there's a lot of people who have issues with the writing and the storytelling. We got a couple of comment or I, I picked a couple main points. There was I, a lot of comments. I asked you guys specifically, cause I kept seeing a lot of stuff like, Oh, this is bad writing. This is bad writing. But no one ever kind of specific, like specifically said why. Or gave examples to what they didn't like. So I put out on one of the videos and it got way more reaction than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Um, But I have a really great example of something that happened to me personally. That was a a slow burn? No. In terms of a... I don't want to say... Out of characteristic reaction to something. Okay. If you didn't know, I do Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And it's a very violent sport. We're trying to choke each other out. We're trying to break each other's arms. But there's no striking. No striking, no punches, no elbows, no kicks, none of that stuff. It's joint manipulation and chokes. (laughs) 
Um, so we're, and I train at a place where we go real hard. We spar, we train, we beat the shits out of each other. Like literally we, we go really hard and you know, I was having, I was having a bad week. I was having a really bad week and I saw something that really bugged me. Mm-hmm. A higher level jujitsu teammate of mine was kind of roughing it up with a low level, like the lowest of levels. White belt. White belt of jujitsu guy. And I didn't like that. I then conveniently was next up for this guy. <laughs> and he accidentally, kind of accidentally, he, he could be kind of physical um, with like his elbows and, and stuff like that. And he caught me in the face. With an elbow on the nose, wasn't it? Uh, no, it was kind of. It was just kind of like grazed across my face. Okay, and I snapped. <laughs> like it is completely uncharacteristic of me to do that in my jujitsu class because one, I'm an instructor there. Two, I've been doing this for a very long time. I'm really good at keeping my cool. But the combination of having a really bad week, watching this guy kind of roughhouse. A lower level, weaker dude. For no reason. For no reason. And then the fact that he connected on my face through really close to my delicate, pretty reconstructed nose. Oh my God. Which is still messed up. There was no plastic surgery. All you got was you fixed your deviated septum. Relax. And it just was like the perfect combination of shit for me to grab his arm and crank way too hard than I should have. On a, on a shoulder lock. I immediately did it. I immediately felt like shit. Obviously, I didn't slaughter hundreds of thousands of people. No, you did with not. With my snapping. And we wouldn't call him an innocent. No. But I, I kind of use that as an example because not only based off of where Daenerys has come from, who she is, who her father is, the amount of incest that led to her being born throughout all the thousands of years or whatever of the Targaryens. Flip a coin. She was having a really bad week. Yeah. She had lost another baby, and we know that she considers her dragons babies. Yes, because she's the mother of dragons. Her number one advisor or whatever, Masande, you want to consider her. She was like a best friend, like a sister. Like watching her get her head sliced off. Mm. You know, she lost Jorah not that far before that. Yep. And John rejected her. And it was like, it was a perfect combination. Well, and, and Sansa. And a perfect wave of things. You get at Sansa in there as well. To where she was just having a really bad week on top of all the other shit she's dealing with. Because it's a lot. She snapped. Yeah. She just went crazy. She she lost it on a weapon of mass destruction, which is probably the worst, which is probably the worst place to be in a moment like that. But something set her off, and she lost it. And I, I can't classify that. Like, yeah, maybe the snap happened in one episode, mm-hmm. but I felt like the buildup to her and her actions has long, long been foreshadowed. We're going to go over that, correct? Yes, we have we have some comments for that. Okay. Um, so let's just jump into the comments. Let's do it. You want to start it off? Absolutely. Is that Gregor? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Gregor, sir, Daenerys through the whole series was about setting people free, being just, protecting the weak. How in the world does this episode make any sense? If that's the way the books are like, I'm glad I never read them. This whole story arc is a massive disappointment. Well, at this point, we in the books, they still think well, John's dead. Right. They haven't caught up yet. Yeah. Um, Laura Croft says, The Mad Queen outcome made sense, but the plot and buildup was rushed and it was awful. I do feel like every one of these episodes is rushed. I think that's the perfect word to describe what is going on. I haven't disliked anything yet, but there is a definite sense of, holy shit, we're really powering through these fucking episodes. Like, right, right. It's they like are we've watched like, multiple seasons. Right, or at least multiple episodes. In one episode. Like, we're getting like three or four episode developments. Like, the the rushing part I totally get in terms of some of the stories that, that are being told. 
Um, but I definitely have not had a. I, I'm, I'm enjoying what I'm watching for sure. Okay. Um, fight fan. Danny had that look in her eye. By the way, major, major props to Amelia Clark, who has been sensational in season eight. Give her this girl an Emmy. Hell yeah. She's. I agree. She's an excellent actress. She is Those de- eyebrows are very expressive. She is pulling. <laughs> she is pulling this off really well, regardless of what she might potentially be feeling about Daenerys and the character and the development and all that stuff. Well, I she's, wonder what her opinion is now. She's definitely selling it. Um, Tom Maddox with a long, really insightful comment. You want to read the, lo- the long one? Yes. There are a lot of upset reactor reactors Danny fans out there today. I know because I have watched most of them. The one thing that came to my mind watching this episode is that throughout the course of the series, Daenerys has had the best of intentions, but has relied on her advisors to keep her worst instincts in check. That's true. Now that half her advisors are dead and she does not trust Jon or Tyrion anymore, she no longer has anyone to balance things out. I think that when the bells rang, she just thought to herself that she had not made them pay enough for what they had taken from her. That by surrendering Cersei in the city, were depriving her of the vengeance she was determined to inflict on them. See, I think that comment from Tom. I mean, that was pretty bomb ass comment. Thank you, Tom. I think I think that's something that is being highly overlooked. Yeah. Is that she has some really, really, or had some really fantastic advisors, kind of really Having compassionate her, yeah, reel people. Reel it back in. Like very compassionate people, people who really care and understand her. And kind of what her mission and goals are. And, you know, I know it, it's not, John doesn't necessarily classify as someone who is an advisor. Well, but I mean, sort of. To an extent. But it's it's really Jorah and Masande and, mm-hmm. you know, Tyrion. And um, it, it's, there's a scenario where there was a season where John, she wanted to just go burn everything down. Mm-hmm. She had already kind of made the decision to go do that. And John kind of made a comment about not doing, not doing it. When they were in the cave? It was before that. It was when... They were on Dragonstone. Yeah. I forget exactly which episode it was. But I feel like without, you know, maybe a certain talk here and there, I think she might have done more damage than what... Like in that scene, all she did was destroy the Lannisters. Right. Remember when they were... They were marching with the with the money. Um, oh, right. When um, they took over um, Lady Olenna. Yeah. Um, so. High Garden. There was that talk could have maybe reeled her in a little bit in terms of destroying a lot more than maybe she wanted to. Mm-hmm. And instead, she kept it to the armies and the, and the military. Right. Which, you know, that that's fine. It's war. Like, shit happens. Um, that could potentially have been worse. There are probably countless other examples of that. Yeah. And I think that goes so far to have good, compassionate, understanding advisors with because you. Because it gives you that point of view. Right. And, and it might be, it, it gives you the point of view and it could give you that comfort to like maybe take a breath, relax a little bit, think about what you might be doing and then change your course of action. Right. And at in that moment, after John kind of rejected her and she was like, fine, fear. Fear it is. She said, let it be fear. Yeah. That moment, I don't know where her, like what could have changed potentially with if Masande was still around or if Jorah was still around to kind of be like, Hey, whatever happens here, the bell rings, just accept it. Like you're going to win. Yeah. Um, who knows? But I, I think that, I think Tom, Really, really, really great comment just because I do feel like it could potentially be something that was overlooked. Right. Uh, Robert White, we got a lot of good Daenerys comments here. There were so many, it was hard to pick. Right. Um, I feel when John couldn't give her the love that she do de- so desperately wanted and needed from him, that's why when he pulled back from the last kiss, she said, very well, let it be fear. Hmm. John could have given her the love she wanted and probably would have turned out differently. She was then all alone in the world with too much hurt in her soul to control. I understand. Which is another really big one. You know, being rejected by the one person kind of like obviously Grey Worm's still there, but obviously he's not a love interest. No. Like she had never been rejected. 
everybody's always kind of chasing Daenerys. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And that moment, John, again, Mr. Honest, couldn't kind of bullshit that situation and just give Daenerys what he wanted or what, what if, she wanted. What if Dario was there? I feel like Dario would have told her to go burn everything. Potentially. Because or, I feel like he's like, yeah, girl, whatever you want to do, just come back to bed with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Dario is, is such a wild card because he, she could just go back to Marine. He'll, he'll love her. I saw that comment somewhere. He'll, he'll love her. He'll give her the love she needs or That's wants. I feel like she, I, you know, if you need a little boy toy. Yeah. Dario is your man. <laughs> fallen, fallen angel 8X. All the prophecies are meaningless. Danny turns Mad Queen in basically one episode, which is complete, which is complete character assassination. And I had I picked this comment because mm -hmm. I, I saw a lot of other mentions of this. The vision in the House of the Undying yes. in season two, yes. when Daenerys is, we get to see Drogo again with the baby. Oh, I love that um, episode. But in that scene, in that prophecy. If that's considered a prophecy, um, it's a vision. So, yes. Yeah, well, um, I feel like, yeah. She is walking through the Iron Throne Room. And we originally it thought it was snow. It wasn't snow. It's we, not snow. We went back and watched, and a lot of people confirmed this online. It's ashes. And the place it's is ashes. destroyed. If you look at the ceiling, there's holes burnt into it. So, technically. It's falling apart. And technically, the prophecy is right. Again, it's ashes. that happened in season two. Ugh, so God. It's again, so the, nuts. the breadcrumbs were there. They they told us all along that Daenerys had this this just evil streak in her. And we saw her annihilate. Like yeah, it was a lot of it was under war like war war terms, and she never hurt innocent people. From the as far as I could really think of off the top of my head. Mm. Well, I mean, I mean, she did behead that w one of the slaves, but I mean, he did, he, now he earned that beheading. Yeah. I can't totally pinpoint the, uh, but she has told people, like she specifically has told Varys, like you betray me, I'm going to burn you. Yeah. Like she hasn't, and again, you're not, that, that, that's what, that again, pro wrestling term here, he'll turn with a slow burn. You're going to just get snippets of it. You're not going to get like the full thing in season two, if it's going to happen in season eight, like, well, I want to hear from everybody who left a comment, you know, when it was like heat of the moment, this is the way I feel right now. After you've gone back, you've done some research. Now, how do you feel? Do you still feel, do you still feel, wow, talking much? <laughs> do you still feel like it was all in one episode and that is it? Because at first I was like so pissed. I was like, Daenerys, no, no. How could you do this? Oh my God, this is awful, blah, blah, blah. But then, you know, we've had a couple of days and it's like, you're right. This was coming. Yeah. Shit. I think it's hard. And, and again, I, I go back to- I don't to, like to admit that, that he was right because I don't like to admit that he's right. <laughs> because never, I'm right. Never. Um, but again, to go back to the whole Luke Skywalker thing, like I don't want- like, I don't want him to be that. No, I don't want him I don't, to be awful. I don't want him to be what he was in The Last Jedi. But you know what? Like, it happened. It is what it is. Like, I'm a huge Luke Skywalker fan. And, like, there's nothing I could do about it. it it's it's what happened. I officially never really still haven't gotten any good explanation as to why. Like, we got small little bits of, like, oh, this happened I never saw anything happen, which is always more impactful than just hearing like, oh, this was destroyed and people died. Like, okay, well, show me. Um, but I get it with the whole Daenerys thing. And it's just one of those things where being such a hardcore fan, you might not have seen the signs because you didn't want to believe that they would be true. That's, that's true. That's a I really, mean, that's love a is tough, blind. that is a tough thing. And as we've seen throughout watching the show and getting caught up in everything, like, Daenerys has a really, really strong fan base. Yes, she and does. And that could be... <laughs> yes, she does. That could be a really... That, that, that... For anybody who has invested all this time into this character, there are people who name their kids Daenerys or Khaleesi. And, like, 
they have probably every mother of dragon shirt and cup and sticker and everything that you could possibly own because Game of Thrones <clears throat> makes everything. As Nikki raises her hand. Yeah. Yep. They literally make everything Game of Thrones. I've never seen so much merch in my entire life for one product. Like, there is literally everything. I'm ready to buy a cat and name it Khaleesi, but not anymore, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it, it. I could see why it's so hard to see it and fully kind of grasp and understand that that's who she has become. But again, thousand years of incest. Her father has shown history of it. She was having a really bad week. She's lost a lot of really important people. And again, a lot of people have lost a lot of really important people. Well, when a Targaryen but, born, is born, the world flips a coin. Yeah. And, you know, not everyone is in as much pressure as she is. No, also. that's a lot. Like, She's, she needs to save the world. Her whole life has been towards getting onto that Iron Throne and changing the world and breaking the wheel. And for the first time... Breaking the chains. For the first time, it was at her fingertips. Like, it was there. And it just started, like, for the first time, it's, like, started slipping away. And then people started dying. And then she was getting betrayed. And then things just weren't working. And again, it was just a horrible mix of a bunch of stuff that just led to her doing what she did. Which, one of the more horrific things I've ever seen on anything. Just seeing all those charred bodies. Mm. Just awful. Yes. Um... That was a really good long chat about Daenerys. As always, of course, if you are watching this on the YouTube channel, leave comments. We want to hear what your thoughts are all these days later. And if you are listening on one of the many, many podcast distribution sites, go find us on social media and let us know what you thought. We want to hear from you for sure. But that wasn't the only thing that happened this episode, even, no. though, even though it felt like it was the only thing. It felt like the main thing. There were clearly... A lot of, you know, very, in a lot of people's eyes, questionable decisions. Mm -hmm. Another one that I totally saw coming and was not a surprise and made perfect sense to me was Jamie Lannister's last second turn. <sighs> Another one. He was, and he's on my list. We've got some really good was. comments. Was. We've got some really good comments here. Let's jump into that and then we can discuss what we see here. Okay. Um, Eddie P the 180 they did with Jamie's story arc when his story was about redemption instead they put him and Cersei back together so they can die together TRL Total Request Live who, rem <laughs> who remembers that show did we just and when MTV was about music and not we, reality did we just age, did we just reveal how old we are with we, that one everybody already knows we were old yeah. I was 100% sure that when Jamie wanted into the map room and they were hugging, and the camera was spinning around to show both their faces that Arya was going to kill both of them with needle and run through both. Yeah. What a moment that would have been. Oh, well. I totally thought that Arya went up there anyways and was like, bitch, this is going down that right was, now. That camera spin, specifically, that TRL is talking about there, I, like, I still... I 100% believe Jamie was never going to kill Cersei. Like, that was never in my mind. But in that one moment where they were embracing each other and the camera was spinning, I was actually anticipating him to, to take her out right there. Uh, but then it, it's like you want, you think that it's going to happen. You're like, oh, wait, no. I mean, she is pregnant with this baby. Supposedly. Supposedly. We never found out if that was true or not. Well, I mean, she talked about the kid even at death, so. That's true. You want to read this one? Yes. What was that? Sogerman67. Jamie went there to die with Cersei in the arms of the woman he loved. And then, 80, Ew. <laughs> and then 83 Gem. I've always viewed Jamie's love for Cersei as a metaphor for addiction. Yes. This episode makes perfect sense in those terms and leaves me feeling very, very sorry for him. Yes. And that's... that. That's, we talked about this. That's kind of always where my brain's at with him. Yeah. I keep saying it makes total sense. It's a twin thing. I keep saying it's a twin thing and I and you know, I probably wouldn't be saying that if it wasn't for Haunting of Hill House. Um, but it's a thing. The twin thing is real. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what Jamie like I think the addiction thing is perfect because addicts will say things, they will try to like make them believe certain things. They will and hurt people. Earlier in the season he specifically was like I'm fighting for the living and then bailed on him. Like that's, that's what happens. 
Like he, his love and his relationship for Cersei, like eighty three gem, I think nails it on the head. He is addicted to loving his sister. Well, and Brienne was rehab, and he just he had to leave rehab. Yeah, he he had a relapse, and that's the bottom line. And like all these He'll people, go to the ends of the earth for his addiction. Totally, and and the whole idea that he his arc his redemption arc was ruined. How do we know that his he was supposed to have a full complete redemption? I mean, that's true. We don't know that. How do we know if that was always like they? Again, I think that's why like we're going to talk about the the poor writing that people were referencing. Y'all bring and up the good points. I think that is a sign of good writing. Is that like I obviously saw it coming and felt that it was coming, but a lot of people were really thrown off by it. When you could do something in the story that shocks people and confuses people, maybe not confuses them, but kind of like shocks them into being like, "Oh my god, that's that what that that's what happened. Like when you could kind of like hit hit them with a really big surprise. I feel like that's good storytelling. Like again, maybe we all share a different idea on that, but I never viewed Jamie's story to be complete with him staying with Brienne. I was hoping for the best, yes. but expecting the worst. Of course, I always thought that his story was going to end with Cersei. That's where it started. Like him throwing Brandon out of a window for to protect the love that he has mm-hmm. for his sister. The things you do for love. To them dying together. Yeah. That is so fitting and makes perfect sense to me. I mean, that wasn't like the best death no, in the world. No, it wasn't. I mean, I saw a metaphor. I don't know if I grabbed the comment, but the metaphor just their world collapsing on them, which is basically what was happening. Right. But like the whole Jamie thing, I had high hopes for him. To stay with Brienne, but I mean, let's be real. This dude is who he is, and the stuff that he has done, like it was beautiful to watch him and his redemption. But we saw him doing good things when he was Brienne, and the moment he was back with Cersei, he became an asshole again. Yep. Like it's just who he is, and it's like. But now that you look back at it, like everybody answer this question: Doesn't it look like addiction? I think it totally does. Mm-hmm. Anytime you're with your drug of choice, bad things happen. Anytime you're trying to do the right thing and be with the right people, good things happen. Totally. And well, I mean, minus when he got his hand cut off. I mean, because that was with Brienne. Yeah. <laughs> but he was defending her. Yeah. You know, he was he was doing the right thing in that moment. But again, I don't... I know it's hard because I know there's a lot of people who love Jamie Lannister because he is a phenomenal character. Oh my God, he's awesome. It was a blast yeah. watching his story play out. And it's just one of those things where they they kind of ripped everyone's heart out with like a last minute. Nope, this isn't going to be a happy ending. Nope. Have you not been paying attention? <laughs> uh, nope.com. <laughs> if you thought this had a happy ending, you have not been paying attention. Yeah, well, there's that. All right. And let's talk about the sister. Cersei, Cersei Lannister. Who had a very, very... Very interesting episode. Um, let's just jump right into the comments and then we could discuss. Um, starting with who we got here. Dream of the Rebel. Cersei walking away from the Clegane Bowl. <laughs> I can never say their name right. Clegane, Clegane drama. drama. Laughing my ass off. That shit <laughs> cracked me up so much. Like, excuse me, I'm just gonna She's like, I'm just oh. gonna walk through here like, real oh. fast. She's like, this is gonna happen? Like, yes. okay. You guys have fun. Like, mm. Don't mind me. Just walking through. It's like you're walking in front of people in a movie theater. Yeah. Like, oh, pardon me. Excuse me. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Pardon me. Just just let me buy. Let me buy. I don't want anything to do with this. Yeah. That that shit was funny because it was like such Cersei. That 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 cracked me up. As you know, I got a little excited right now when we're just talking about it because it's just so funny. Yeah, and just I'm sure the way that Kyburn got friggin' murdered there. Ooh. I'm sure she was just like That was like a that was like a Gallagher and watermelon. Yeah, she's like deuces. You're not doing that to me. You want to Google that one? Yeah, that's Google, a fun one. Google Gallagher smashing watermelons. There you go. ESP eighty seven. Cersei could have stopped the whole thing by not killing Rhaegal or Masande. If she'd surrendered in episode four, nothing would have happened. Cersei is more mad than Daenerys, well, which we will talk about. I mean, would Daenerys have given up? 
No. Who knows? I mean... She wouldn't have been like, you know what? If her baby and her best friend weren't murdered, yeah, I think she would have approached things a lot differently. Um, You want to read this one? What is that? I don't know. Croatan? Uh, I love Cersei, and I feel like she could have gotten a better death. I... I t- I, I don't totally like, agree I with that. I hate Cersei, but I feel like that death could have been way better. I totally... That is one of the things that I totally agree with. I feel like her death was very underwhelming. Especially, like... Again, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. I wanted her to be, like, picked up by Drogon and just dropped something, in the ocean or something. Something crazy. Um, and then the last one on Cersei, Notch, jo- Notch Johnson. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know why that name is so funny. Is the that wor- supposed to be funny, Notch? <laughs> the worst thing Cersei ever did was blow up this, the, the cathedral. As Stephen mentioned, this was even a calculated move to eliminate her enemies, whom were... Densely gathered inside, oh, and it was go. even chosen as a desperate last measure. So I picked that one to kind of counter against the one against ESP87, who said that Cersei's more mad than Daenerys. And I think I talked about this at the end of the episode... Like, there was nothing mad about Cersei. She is a savage. She is a horrible person. But she does she, not act on emotion. She has probably... Right away. She probably has some of the devil inside of her. Yes. Without question. But everything she has ever done has 100% been a calculated move to further either protect her children or to further her goal of the throne. Yes. I mean, and when I say is not... Emo- she does act on emotion, but she holds on to that shit and holds it and holds it and holds it until the perfect moment. And it's like, boom, right in your face. And like, surprise, bitch. Right. And I mean, and the comparison is that Daenerys clearly was acting strictly on an emotional feeling of but, just But acted in the moment. And uncontrolled. Didn't hold on to it, yeah. So yeah, like the whole Cersei thing. I thought it was fascinating the way that she was acting. And I know a lot of people I think might have had, I think there were some issues with this as well. To her getting all emotional, crying, embracing Jamie at the end. And again, that was one of those things that I totally, it landed for me. It made sense to me because there were two different moments where Kyburn came up to her and was like, um, we're screwed. We need to leave. And she's like, nope. You're on Kill the Dragon once. He'll do it again. You're like, oh, Cersei, the, all of the scorpions are destroyed. The it doesn't iron, matter. The Iron Fleet is gone. All it takes is one shot. And it's like, are you not listening to what he just said? Like, she was still believing what she wanted to believe. And then he came back again later and was like, we need to leave. This is a dangerous place to be. And she's like, the Red Keep's the safest place in the world. It's never fallen. It's not fallen today. It's like, well. Which is not true, by the way. I wish I would have grabbed the comment. But... I think the comment that I saw, I don't know the full history, obviously. I don't, I'm not that studied up on it, but I believe the Red Keep has fallen twice Okay. previously, many, many years before. Um, but that was just the, that was how she always was. She always felt like that. Yeah. She always felt overly confident that whatever she had going on was going to work. Yes. And then... You see, she's the, invincible. You see the you see the tear fall, and I think that's the first moment. Regardless of how ambitious you are, how savage you are, how terrible of a person you are, the moment you feel like it's all over, mm-hmm. that's a bad moment for you. Yeah, there's no coming back from that. That's emotion. Like you, I don't have any problem seeing Cersei cry in that spot. Because it's done. Yeah. Everything that you had, again... Well, I mean, I feel like all the horrible shit you've done to everybody is just coming right back to you, girlfriend. Totally. And and that's why, like, I think the emotion she showed landed for me. Because as I was watching that, it wasn't necessarily a feeling of, like, me feeling pity or feeling sorry for her. Mm-hmm. It was more of an under of, like, like, oh... She understands that this shit is done. Yeah. She is going to die. Yeah. And I don't care who you are, unless you're the mountain, because I don't really know what he is anymore. Um, well. But I don't care who you are. When you're about to, when you get the feeling that you're about to die, that shit is scary. Do you, have you had that feeling before? I mean, I've almost drowned before. Same. 
when I was 15 years old body surfing some waves that I shouldn't have been body surfing. Oh, I and I got like, caught underneath. I was young in a pool. My brother thought it was funny to push the raft over me. And it was a gigantic Ooh. raft that literally like almost consumed the entire pool. That's it was horrifying. Terrifying. My parents didn't even. No. Lady Onana. <laughs> Mom. I got thrown off a jet ski going like 60. Oh, but that's kind of fun though. <laughs> no, that was not fun. I thought my life flashed before my eyes. Sorry. No, I used to throw people off of the jet skis. If they were on the back of me, I'm going to do a spin move and knock you off. And it's hilarious. My buddy Zoe. One of my best friends from college had no right driving that sea dew. He did not know what he was doing. No. And instead of like plowing through the little wake of waves, he was like jumping into them, like not knowing. Mm. We were flying. This thing was brand new. It was like souped up, super powerful. And like he hit a wave and I was sitting on the back. There were three of us. That's the first problem. <laughs> and I was the third one on the back. And like the tail, like he did like a tail whip into a wave. Yeah. And like the people who saw me said that I hot, like I skipped on the lake, like, like a, a rock. rock. And they were like, holy shit, Steven's dead. <laughs> but I lived. I almost shit my pants, Obviously. but. You probably did. I almost, no, I didn't. I almost did. My ass hit so hard that like, Yeah. TMI. Thank Sorry. you very much. No one wants so, yes, to hear that shit. The whole back to the point, like regardless of who you are and the idea, the thought of you knowing that it's over and you might die. Yeah. I, I'm sure the baddest of badasses would probably shed a tear yeah. and probably embrace the one person that they've had the most history with, regardless if it's good or bad. And in that moment, Jamie was there. They, they, they love each other. They're twins again, twin thing. And then they had a bunch of shit fall on their head, which was a lame ending to both of their stories. What's with the, the shit? All oh, that's like the the main word you've used in this entire shit? podcast is shit. Sorry, poop. No, stop. Oh. Bricks fell on their head, homie. Yeah, bricks. Their whole world came crashing down. You know, a lot of people were like, "We didn't actually see them die. Maybe they're alive." Um, there's no coming back from that. They're dead. <laughs> They're both dead. Hashtag Cersei is dead. Hashtag Jamie is dead. Hashtag die, bitch. So yeah, I, I, I agree with the people who didn't like their deaths. Um I I feel like Cersei did deserve a more vicious, more satisfying death than just watching some some stuff fall on top of her mm -hmm. and kind of just you know, crush well, her. Well I to mean death. she got to die with the one that she loves, like Bitch, what? Yeah, I mean, exactly. I think she should have been killed like before Jamie even got there. I also saw a meme of Jamie, you know, like when he's holding his little, his, his little, his hand above the crowd <laughs> and he's like, notice me, notice me. And it's like, you know, when the bar is full and you're trying to get the bartender to pay attention to you and you're like, hey, over here, <laughs> wait, me. One thing. I feel like is no debate without question. Mm. You can't say that it was poorly shot. You can't say it was poorly built up. You can't say it was poorly written. You can't say nothing bad. I'll agree with a lot of stuff in terms of the plot holes and maybe the rushed storytelling. But the Clegane Bull, <laughs> Clegane Bull, that shit. The Hound Sorry. versus the Mountain. I said shit again. My bad. That ish was off the chain. That was everything I could have possibly imagined between the hound and the mountain. Oh, God. But when he Prince Oberoned him, I was like, oh, God, don't do that. He totally, after he smashed his face a little bit, he totally looked like the father in Braveheart. <laughs> the older dude who got, like, axed to the chest. Like, when he, like... Ah! screamed at him with his hair all messed up and blood all over. He totally looked like like the older dude, the dad. That that shit was hilarious. But um, like, I don't know if hilarious is the right word. The way he looked, me remembering that was kind of hilarious. So, M.G. Aw, when Arya called him Sandor and thanked him. I know, that was bomb. That was such a great, like... 
you know, talk about a good ending to kind of an arc and a story, him and Arya. Mm-hmm. Like, the two of them had such a fantastic story. I love it. It was so good. And for it to, like... It's like, don't be like me. For it, once again, to, like, end with, like, him protecting Arya. I know. And being like... You're a pain in my ass. Get the hell out of here. Yeah. Don't be like me. I've wanted revenge my whole life. Look at me. Mm-hmm. Get out of here. Just leave. Um, you want to read the next one? Yes. Dom Pops. The Hound story arc was consistent from beginning to end. He ended up destroying his brother by fire. Just perfect. One of my favorite... Well, yeah. One of my favorite characters. I'm happy he was the... He was there almost until the very end. I mean, damn near, you know? Yeah. And that was bomb. And then Minya... I cannot believe he stabbed the mountain through the eye. Did nothing. And he still kept going. It did nothing. Uh, Minya, 2009, an absolute insane episode. And the death that made me cry the most was Sandor Clegane, R.I.P. the Hound. He fought his way into my heart. Yeah. He really... He was like a fungus. He just grew on you. Totally. Like, from the moment that he started and, and how you kind of saw him... And the stuff that he had done, and then the way he kind of grew into like caring for Sansa and then caring for Arya, like, but then he wanted his fucking chickens. Well, (laughs) yes, sticking up for Sansa, and then when he was like, fuck Joffrey, and then it was like, yeah, man. That was so cool. Fuck Joffrey. That was such a cool, that was such a cool moment. By the way, shout out to the subscriber who a long time ago gave me a necklace with Joffrey's face on it. I still have that on my lamp <laughs> where I do my makeup. I see it every day. That's spectacular. What a ah, way. Joffrey, what you a, piece of crap. What a way to start your day. Yeah. But, you know, Hound vs. the Mountain, it really was. And, and the way they were cutting between their fight and, like, Arya's struggles yeah. to, like, make it out of there, which yeah. a lot of very interesting notes about her potentially not being alive, which... We'll talk about. Um, but just the way it was cut was fantastic. The way, like, the, the final reveal that we finally got to see the mountain's face, like, in clear as Disgusting. day. Just like, that is always what you've been, brother. Terrifying. A monster. His eyes were just blood red. And his, it was like, sick. He was no longer, like, a person anymore. He was, he was Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. Kyburn's monster. And what did Frankenstein's monster do? Didn't he kill his creator? Is that what happened? I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I don't know the history on that. Just like he killed Kyburn. Shit. I mean, he didn't smash his head with one thing. I don't. Uh, I don't. You think. don't know that. I don't remember. But yeah, I believe. I believe Frankenstein's monster actually, you know, killed him. I will so, Google that shit yes. right now. Um, but who technically won that fight? Uh, I'm going to say the Hound because the Hound is the one who ultimately grabbed him and pushed him to the... The Hound deserves the TKO on that? I guess. 100%. The tackle. It's like it's like a steel cage match. The 100%. First one, the first one, first feet to hit the mat wins. Oh my God. So technically... definitely the Mountain lost. Technically the Mountain was the first one to hit the fire, I believe, so he loses. Yeah. Unless they landed the one, in there. He was the one with his, uh, you know, on the bottom. That was a very poetic ending. The fact that, you know, the hound who had... That had to have been a horrible, horrible experience for him. Being so afraid of fire and just seeing all that fire all over the place. Okay, but once he saved Arya, I think he was, like, over it. And then he was like, fuck this Well, he had his mission. You're going to hurt me by fire? I'm going to kill you by fire, bitch. He he had his mission. And he, he just... He had to go end his brother. And it was... If you think that didn't go well, then you just don't like anything. <laughs> because the 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 brother battle was so great. Something that had been teased for a long time. The build up was great. It started at the end of season seven, where the hound just walked up to the mountain. He's like, This isn't your end. You you know who's coming for you. Yeah. Like that little face to face was just like, oh, we're gonna get it. Let's go. Well, I mean, even in this season, when he's like riding with Arya, like I, you know, I plan on going to. I'm not coming back. Yeah. From King's Landing. That's it. This is it for me. But it was just, 
it, it, I like the callback of the the Obrin. Like he that freaking just lifted fun. the hound. He Ooh. lifted the hound up like he was nothing. Yeah. Like the dude who plays the mountain, that guy is such a monster. In in real life. Yeah, he's he's one like a, They're not faking his size. He's a strong man. Like he's the strongest man in the world. His wife, he could like you know, pick her up with she's his like, pinky. She's probably like normal size though. She oh just my looks gosh. like she's, yeah. She's probably like five five. She looks. She just looks like nothing next to that guy because he is Fuck, an absolute dude, he's monster. Nuts. So Arya, the plot armor is strong, as they say, with Arya Stark. Is it though? Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, I mean, the fact that she survived, like if she survived all of that, that'd be pretty insane. I mean. She dodged a bunch of shit falling on her. She dodged dragon fire. She dodged other people trying to kill other people. Um, but here's a couple really interesting, interesting kind of things that came out of this, which is something, again, this is one of the reasons why I love the comment so much because I would have never have known this stuff. Right. Starting off with, you want to go? Yeah. He said G... Is it St. Germain? G. St. Germain. When Arya fi- found the white horse, Bible Re- Revelation 6 8, I looked, and there before me was a pale horse. Its rider was named Death. That's fits, nuts. Fits of rage when Arya climbed atop the pale mare. Mm-hmm. That's a f- female horse. And rode off. I got chills, especially after the burned child with her mother, mother had, had burned horse. Had a burned horse toy. That's a hard thing to say. My exact exact thoughts were Daenerys is so dead because that death on a pale horse is riding off. That's death. So did she die or did Arya die and she became no one? I don't know. That that like that idea completely like gave me one of those blo- mind blown moments mm-hmm. where I'm like, oh my god, what what does that mean exactly? Like what is like. What is, what does that mean for her? Like the fact that that single horse, if this is, if she survived, the fact that that single horse survived all that is just insanity. First yeah, of all, how every, everywhere around them is like completely like, um, ashes and blood and just destruction and nothingness. And there's this beautiful white horse. I mean, a little it dirty. was not it was not perfectly white as snow clean, like it had blood on its legs, ash and soot all over its legs. But it's like she walked right up to that horse and was just like, let's go. Yep. Trust me. The idea I mean, they want, they rode off into the sunset. That would be a really interesting. Like, I don't know how I would have to see how the series ended. But if that was like the way Arya died. And now, like, a dream sequence. That's some bullshit right that'd there. Be, I think that'd be really weird. I don't like that. I don't I don't like the idea that that she would be dead unless she's becoming no one. Did she add another name to her list? Probably Daenerys. Do you really think they're going to allow... I mean, if Arya is alive, do you think they're going to allow her to be the one... That kills Daenerys. Or no. Do you think John's going to kill Daenerys? I because I think that somebody's going to try and kill Daenerys. I think that's what's going to happen. I mean, you don't have any other choice at this point. She Every killed innocent people of mass quantity. Yeah, and I don't want to hear the nonsense that it was war because there are innocent people in war, women and children. And they ring and, the bell, dude. And like, like, so go after the the Red Keep. Leave all of the city there. Then just go after Cersei. Yeah, it was all there over. There was no need to kill all those people and animals and children. All of my things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it. the war was over once they surrendered. The, the bell rang. The gates were already open. People have laid down their swords. But it, it, as soon as that bell rang, she was like, fuck this shit. I'm fucking it all up for I really, everybody. I really want to hear from her. I Daenerys? really, yeah, I want to know. Get her on the phone right now. Like, We're I, taking live calls right I, now. <laughs> I don't know who she would discuss this with, but I want to hear why she did what she did. And Do I you know think she would tell John. I, I don't know if she would be honest. I don't know if she trusts John anymore. I don't, I don't know what her 
what her care level is for him anymore. But I guess or in Tyrion, the Tyrion, maybe. I guess in the uh, maybe. Well, she doesn't trust him either, apparently. Um, but I guess in the director's commentary at the end, that it was strictly out of like revenge that she did what she did. Oh yeah, and and to bring up the green smoke. Oh yeah, that was all stuff planted by her dad. That wasn't stuff planted by the wildfire was planted throughout the city by the Mad King. Right, and it had not never, by Cersei. It had never exploded because right. there was no fire. Yeah, because Jamie killed he the Mad follow, King. He didn't follow through with his plan. Correct, because Jamie stopped him. So some other notes um, from some other comments that we have that for good stuff that we could talk about. Um, <laughs> Ah, this first one is hilarious from Mr. Q. Tyrion <laughs> is officially the tallest Lannister. Right. Sure is. Right. Sure is. I said this in the episode. How crazy is it that he was the last standing Lannister? I think that's wild. That, I like, mean, after he was, you know, you're a monster and you're not a real Lannister. And just the fact that, like, all the stuff that he survived... He did what he had to do. He lasted longer than Cersei and Jamie. Like, and all, well, I guess I mean, there might still be. I guess they're all gone. They're gone. They're all gone. Like even the cousins. Like I don't know who's. Oh no, yeah. Lancel. He's so hot right now. Well, he's, he's totally he's gone. Dead. Jamie he's, he's choked dead. him. Yeah. But there were there were a lot of Lannisters. Yeah. I would have to imagine they're all dead because they're done. So. Yeah. But just the fact that like Tyrion was the last one. I mean, he was the best character of all of them. Mm -hmm. But, like, he had been in wars and battles. and like, he, he always managed to survive. That dude can't fight. <laughs> yeah. Can't fight shit. Oh, I thought that was pretty fascinating. Here's my comment. Oh, yeah. Here we go. An intellectual, too. By the way, the wildfire, wildfire wasn't Cersei. It was hidden long ago by the Mad King. He put secret stashes of it everywhere. Yeah. Totally. Um, little N. Bran saw all this coming. And just chilling on that wheelchair. True. What the fuck is Brandon doing? I don't know. Seriously. Is there going to be like some major something for him at the end there? Is this like when he wasn't even in one of the seasons com like at all? Oh, that's right. What was that? Five? I can't remember. I don't think he was in season five. I think that's the season. It's like, what are you doing? What's happening? Like, what is he doing? You know so much. I keep um, feel free to tell us I keep at any moment. I keep saying that like because of how I feel like it's been a misdirect about how nothing he's been. Has this Brandon season. ever interacted with Daenerys? Uh I mean they've been in the same room together. But have they actually ever talked? Is Bran ever like this bitch about to blow some shit up. I don't know, but we finally saw one of his visions. Right, with the dragon. With Drogon over flying King, over King's Landing. The shadow of the dragon. Yep, absolutely. So I think that kind of proves that he, he has the ability. The was happening. That he has the ability to see into the future. Um, Thanks a lot, Bran. Seriously, though, like what? Like, Who I'm, we have given That'll be, I think, I think that would be, of all the potential holes... And poor storytelling or writing, whatever you, however you want to put it, if he ends up ending the season doing nothing, I think that'll be a massive letdown. That was a waste of a character. Because I am, I, I like, I talk to the people like, because all the guys at work are like, "What is Brand doing? Like, he's done nothing." And I'm like, I think they're just lulling, like, lulling us asleep on him as his character, and he's going to be like a big, like, we only have one episode left. Is he going to be like the big twist at the end? Be like, or I'm the Night King. You're all dead. Like, <laughs> what is going to happen? But do you think that maybe he told John about it and John was like, no, that's not true. I know Daenerys. She's my queen. I love her. And then as he's standing there after Grey Worm started fighting with the dudes who, with the Golden, not the Golden Company, with the Lannister army after they laid their swords down and he has this look on his face like, Fuck. You still know nothing, Jon Snow. No, now he knows something. What was it? Before it was, I got 99 problems, but a bitch ain't one. And then he's like, I have 100 problems. <laughs> <laughs> you still know nothing, Jon Snow. No, now he knows everything. He knows nothing because... He knows everything. No. Yes, he knows who Daenerys is. He knows who his family is. He knows that Daenerys is now bad. 
Mm. He he knows everything. You say that one more time, I'm gonna chop it off. You know. So, okay, there it goes. Goodbye. Thanks for watching and listening. <laughs> Cat of X, you're on getting his last words and made me laugh. He gets stabbed and says another king for you, referencing his King Slayer nickname about Bitch, Jamie. Bitch, you're on. You ain't no fucking king. That Shut shit, up, dude. Like, that was one of the things that a lot of people had problems with. And also he said, I'm the one who can't yeah, kill Jamie I killed Jamie Lannister. Lannister. But like, that was one of those things where it didn't make sense that Jamie was able to kill him. No, he Euron proved to be... It was like dying. No, but Euron, Euron is a really dope fighter. Like He's proven to be a badass. Mm. And Jamie still can't operate a sword with his left left hand like he still yeah. can't he still ha- is an inept, is an inept fighter with the sword like euron should have smashed him okay but euron had just been like you know put in the water by drogon yeah. with a blown up ship i suppose but like just saying and jamie got stabbed twice dude he got sliced open like through his like mid that was that was one of those Mid-section. like that was a weird moment where one why did that fight happen two how the hell did Jamie beat him and why didn't Euron say that bitch is pregnant with my baby and then Jamie be like no bitch it's actually mine that would have been funny I think so if he would have that would have been like a mic drop yeah actually he, but like Euron's like the war's I over my sister he's like <laughs> the war the war's over that's the that's the sound of a dying city I'm gonna kill you. Like, Mm -hmm. and then bring your head over. If I win, bring your head over to your sister. Like, it sounded like he was ready to bounce in that moment. Like, why would he stick around and fight? Honestly. Like, Like, get out of there, man. I don't know. Um, One one comment. I thought I grabbed it, but I guess I forgot. Um, Talking about Sansa being right this whole time. That Daenerys is a bad person? Yeah. Like, she's a good judge of character? Possibly right. Maybe she probably is a good judge of character after all the shit she's been through. Could it, could it absolutely be possible that all of the things that she's been through, she she's not a little bird anymore. Well, that and just like just through Littlefinger's teachings, that she might be one of the most well inept person to like lead and be in charge of stuff. Mm, I think maybe that might be debatable, but she definitely knows people like she can she can read people i think her experiences with Littlefinger puts him in a, puts her in a really really interesting position to be a leader moving forward i don't know about i really her. believe that um she's been through a lot and she's done a lot of questionable things but yeah i don't know i think i think what she's up to these days lately is i don't know how she's going to handle daenerys at this moment though cuz there's nothing to fight drogon there's nothing. There's no more scorpions. They don't have any weapons that could that could really phase him. I don't know how they're going to handle this. It's going to be really well, interesting. And she, I mean, not only does she have Drogon, she still has the Unsullied. She still has anybody that will fight for her. Yeah, and in that shot in the preview for the final episode, like, it looked like she had a whole bunch of dudes. Like, that army looked big. Yeah, I thought they got annihilated. Yeah. But maybe not so much. Um, the last thing I want to kind of hit on is I like to I like to give all aspects of the people who comment a chance to share their thoughts. I didn't pull any specific comments um, for this because there were a lot, but people are upset. We kind of referenced that. Yeah. And one of the things that people kept talking about, I talked about at the very beginning, was the idea of this the bad writing and bad storytelling. And so I wanted to actually hear what people felt was bad Mm -hmm. like just just seeing a lot of people saying oh this writing sucks they're they're ruining the show like as a person who loves having these open conversations about stuff i wanted to find out why right specifically what don't you like and there were some very very specific things that were being talked about i mean i do feel like sometimes people are just like on the hate bandwagon like oh a couple people hate it yeah you know what I hated it too. Oh, totally. Yeah. Like you, you, it's a mob mentality yeah. without question. Um, and believe me, we get like that too sometimes. But some of the stuff that was hit on and we could kind of talk about these one on one, one at a time. 
Um, a lot of people really hated the way Varys kind of had a rise and fall within five minutes or five scenes is one of the things like the amount of time that he went from being super important to kind of disappearing to being very important again. And then, Oh, that story got wrapped up kind of abruptly. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where Varys was a very interesting character. He probably should have had another conversation with Littlefinger, one last one, his arch enemy. I could I could see the the problems people might have had because those two had such an interesting like storyline um, throughout the series, but it did end very abruptly and very quick for him. I could see why people would be upset about that. Like he was in the process of spying on Daenerys. A lot of people said that he was potentially trying to poison her because she wasn't eating. Okay. And they were onto her. Right. So, or onto him, onto the little girl. Martha. Martha. So, like, there's a theory that he was trying to poison her, try to kill What's her. What's up which with is, all taking up all the rings and stuff? I don't know what that was all about. Um, if anyone knows what the rings were, because they put a focus on that, um, let us know. But yeah, I could see why a lot of, like, Varys was. I mean, he's a very, very pivotal character in this show and he's kind of great. got removed very quickly. Yeah. So I get that. We kind of already talked about, there was a lot of people disappointed with the way Cersei died. Yes. Totally get it. Yep. She deserved something bigger. Like, again, it's one of those things where I understand your point of view and I agree with it, but I also at the same time didn't have a huge problem with how she died because it just felt so fitting that she... Died. With died within the arms of her, of her lover brother. <laughs> um, it was just. She does for as vile and like she's she's just gonna go down as one of the greatest bad guys in the history of cinema and TV shows of anything. One hundred percent. She's easily gonna be in my, if not my top five, definitely one hundred percent in my top ten in terms of villains, just because she was fantastic and Leah Headley was. Absolutely amazing as as Cersei Lannister. So great. And props to you, girlfriend. You know, nothing nothing better than a bad guy getting a well deserved death. Yeah. And I could see why people like I totally agree. Like she deserved something worse, a lot more painful, a lot more punishment. I mean, but more then torture. Again, then again, she was pregnant, so Yeah. Well I don't think whatever. they can torture her that much. She's pregnant. Another consistent theme was, I feel like we needed 10 episodes for season seven and eight to illustrate her descent into madness, talking about Daenerys, which... We've gone over that. That, the the, the, the 10 episode thing is something I completely agree with. Yeah, I want I more episodes, that's for sure. I, I know we're getting like 80 minute episodes, but still, you get three more episodes, or in this case, four more episodes, you could stretch the story out more. Yeah. And I, I I get that gripe. I totally agree. I, I never kind of I don't know if there's an explanation as to why it was seven and four and seven and six episodes for the last two. Um if anyone knows, again, share with us. Um so yeah, that was one of them. And then I just wanted to kind of focus on a positive. Someone wrote saying that they didn't think it was bad writing. It's just I suspected a big twist in the story. And I think that goes to the surprise factor again. Yeah. There were many, many big twists. This episode, last episode, kind of this this season going forward, there were some twists and a lot of surprises. And I think that goes a long way in terms of telling a good story. If you can keep people on their toes. And, you know, again, this is the biggest show in the world. There is no way in hell that they were going to be able to please everyone. I really right. I really believe that. Yeah, that's true. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't think we were going to get a situation where like in Breaking Bad, everyone who loved Breaking Bad thought that the way that show ended was perfect. It, I mean, I, it was. It's going to be, this is bigger. Like in terms of people watching, this is the biggest show. And it's a, there's so many millions of people who watch this show and love it and invested all this time. I just, I couldn't imagine I think the hardest part for a lot of this is that the cast isn't happy with how it's playing out. They are not? They are not. 
I See, think I try not. I try to stay away from that stuff because I don't want it to like change the way I feel. Yeah, and that that's a really that's a really big thing for a lot of people. If like, which is one of those things where Mark Hamill didn't like what happened to Luke Skywalker. It kind of validates my personal point on not liking what happened to him. Daenerys, like I, I could understand why she might not be happy with how her character turned out. Again, you mean Amelia I don't, Clark? Yeah, I don't know if it's because she didn't like how it's happening, or if it's just she doesn't like that it happened, that this character turned bad. Yeah, I don't know if it's she thinks that it was done poorly, or that she just doesn't like that Daenerys became evil. Yeah, like I think those are two very different things. But so, you can't have a happy ending. No, have you been paying attention? Oh my god, stop! Have you been paying attention? Stop with the ASMR. That Ramsey Snow line is going to last forever. Oh, 100%. It's and like the down. best thing. You use it in real life. Totally. And it's just that that wasn't put in the show on accident. Mm-mm. So, again, very controversial episode. This season has been pretty wild. I feel wild. like almost every episode is controversial this season. And a lot of it has to do with its ending. It's the last episodes that we're ever getting. Yeah, they want more so, before it ends. Yep. And if, if it's not going the way that you expected or wanted or predicted, yeah, you might not be happy with what's happening. Mm-hmm. And I totally get it. I, I totally see your point of view. And, you know, I'm, I'm, when, it, when it comes to TV shows and movies, I try my best to be extremely optimistic. And, you know, I'm still enjoying it. it says negative Nancy over here. I'm talking about entertainment. Uh-huh. Um, wow. It, I'm easily pleased... I'm not that hard to please with certain things. Um, I'm the first one to admit that. I'm in, I'm enjoying this season. I I, I, I do acknowledge like it. it's just rushed. I acknowledge all the problems that people have with it. I agree with some of them. Don't agree with all of them, but I totally get it and I see it. I mean, visually, the show has been amazing, and I almost enjoy beautiful visuals mm-hmm. more than you know maybe a small plot hole here or there that people will outrage about but again i feel like i could explain most of the in my brain why things are happening so okay where are you i'm ready to see the next episode yeah you ready to wrap this thing up i i mean i am but i'm not what I do just, you think happens i think somebody's gonna kill daenerys you think she dies i for think sure. john's gonna john is gonna be on the iron throne or Sansa. there is no iron throne i think she destroyed it well, that, I mean, if that vision is correct, the Iron Throne is still there. It's just covered in ashes. Mm, yeah. It looked like it was kind of destroyed, though, no? I don't know. Mm, we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to find out. We shall see. I agree with you. I think Daenerys dies. Maybe Brandon will finally do something. <laughs> we'll see. Any other thoughts? No, I don't have any other thoughts. All right. All right, y'all. That was a very jam-packed. Lots Wrapping of, it up. Yes. There was a lot to discuss again. A lot of topics, a lot of controversy, uh, very divisive, it feels like. A lot of people on both sides, you know. I, I think it's great to be able to have this show digest over a couple days and rewatch it, talk about it. And, of course, that means we want to hear from you. So if you are watching on YouTube, leave us your comments. What if you're, after letting it digest, leave comments down below. Do you Did your opinion change after watching on Sunday night versus maybe seeing it on a Tuesday or a Wednesday and kind of thinking about what went down. Have your feelings changed? Are they same? Are they the same? Do you feel stronger about your opinions? Let us know in the comments. And if you're listening on any of the many, many distribution podcast things, find us on social media. Nikki, Steve, React. We will see you guys next time. Have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.